Welcome to Thinking Rich with Amy Robles. This is the podcast made for you, the smart, ambitious woman. Thinking Rich is the show to help you think bigger, create your business you love, and keep your family first. We know when you enrich a woman's life, you help her entire circle of influence. Now here's your host, Amy Robles. Welcome back. Delighted to have you getting started in your creating your business so you can have a little extra income, but you can still keep your family first. That's what all of this is about. So we're going to jump right in. As you start your online business, you're really excited. Your website is getting there. You're not perfectly satisfied with it, but you really like what's happening. You really like the message that you're sending out to social media and you're getting some good response, some really good feedback from the people watching you. You know you're supposed to have an email list to make your online business grow. You hear people talking about it. You know that this is the, one of the big things to help you. And every time you hear that in your mind, you think, but what do I write about? How often do I even send an email to my customers? What makes somebody decide to join my list? Man, is this another sales thing I have to learn? I do not have time for this. And I get it. I've made all of those mistakes. I've asked those questions. I've gone through it. And people have their different uh, perspectives and directives. And what works for one person may not work for you. I've decided to do this particular sequence, focusing what is email, how does it work, and what makes it so successful so you, the smart, ambitious woman, can keep going with everything else that is important with your life. I just, right in the middle of recording this podcast, got two texts from very successful women at two different times, it's just crazy. And they just need a hand and they would never ask for help if they didn't need it. And I feel really good because I know I can finish what I need to do and then go take care of those little things to help a friend out because they would do it for me easily and in a heartbeat. That's the kind of women that we are. We want to maximize our time. We want to do this effectively. And we don't want to waste a lot of money and put our family, our personal situation in difficult financial situation because we didn't take care of these things. This component right here is foundational to your business. I get chills when I talk about this because once you figure it out, it helps everything else grow. It helps everything else move forward. It connects you with the next piece. It shows you what your market is looking for you. It really helps you focus on your business and give them just a few minutes of concentrated, really direct help and still be able to take care of you the rest of your life. What is better than that? That's why we're going to continue to discuss as we have, all about email marketing as we learn about this specifically for your business. Last week, I gave you the overall primer. There were a few steps in there, and we're going to break it down, go through each step, each component, one by one. What you did is a few months ago, we talked about your sales funnel. What is that? How does it work? How does it work for your business? How do you make this move forward? Now we're talking about, so now you've got this sales funnel started. What is your email marketing strategy? And your strategy looks like this. Imagine there's a circle and we're going to start at the top, and that is someone that is an outsider, a complete stranger, knows nothing about you, never heard about what you do and what you offer. You turn them into an acquaintance, like that kid in microbiology sat three rows away from you, and you can see his face, you know you would recognize him on the street, but you couldn't call him by name. You just know who he is, right? That's an acquaintance. That's what you become when you enter their email box. Then you become an ally. An ally is someone that maybe they sit next to you in class, they trust you. Now in regular life, they see you in their inbox and they like what they're seeing and they're looking for you. Man, I really like this email. I really like how this, it just rings true to my life. I wonder what she's like on Instagram. 
And that's how it starts. And they're looking for you in other avenues to find out more from you. They go to YouTube to see what you have to offer there. And then they go to Facebook because everybody's on Facebook and you don't even have a Facebook page set up. See how this just starts to grow? People look for you in different avenues. Maybe she did something different over here. Maybe this. And they want to learn more from you. You're taking that outsider, top of the circle, go quarter turn and become an acquaintance, quarter turn. Now it's an ally. An ally has converted that from there, they move into your insider. That is your fan. That is someone who is crazy enthusiastic about what you are offering the world. They can't help but talk about your message. They can't help but tell their friends about, oh man, she did this and it was so cool. And it was exactly what we were talking about when she's talking to her friend and then her friends like who was that what was that she goes and learns more and she, now she's signing up because she wants to turn in so look your one outsider has gone around the circle become an insider who took another and told her friend who is another outsider now you have another outsider to work through your email strategy Okay, that's what you're working on. That's what you're working toward. This is how it all builds forward. Because in your insiders, they love to buy what you're selling. They love to hear. They love to be the ones in the know. There is a way that allows you to reach those outsiders, connect with your insiders, and keep continually building your business. That's what your email marketing strategy is all about. But nobody ever talks about this. Nobody ever gives you the big, broad strokes while they're still talking about specifics about your email. Okay, so you hear this. Now you're kind of getting excited. I can feel it. Now you're asking, how do you do that? Where do I even start, Amy? I can hear it, okay? When someone considers subscribing to your email list. Okay. So this now, instead of being you, the business owner, I want you to think of you just regular person. And you're in the middle of a very, very busy shopping mall center. There are levels. You're standing on the bottom floor. You see the escalators going up. There's people walking around everywhere. It's just about the holidays times. And there are just people walking by, walking by. Some have got their bags full. Some have a lot of different things. You are just standing there taking it all in. How would you even know if you're standing in this shopping center and you wanted to invite five friends to your dinner party, right? Let's just start. That's what happens. You, the business owner, are walking by this person. You have bags full of great information. You have ideas and you have these little cards and you have this little bit of nugget and you have this great things to offer but nobody knows because they're just standing there overwhelmed by what else is out there, everything going on. So step one to start this whole email marketing strategy, the circle, take your outsider to an insider, is to offer something to initiate that first critical interaction. And you think, uh, uh, I don't know, what is that? Think about, I talk about this all the time, when you go to Costco, especially just this last weekend was the Super Bowl, there were samples everywhere. Holy cow. So somehow you need to have a sampling, an offer, something that makes you stand out from the crowd. Now, people will call it an opt-in or they'll call it an upgrade or a freebie. I've heard it called a freemium. It's been called a giveaway. Here, sign up now and we, a bonus I'll give you or a bribe. Look, I've got this really cool thing I want to give to you. I'm just really excited about giving it to you. That's because what they're doing as a business owner is creating this sense of trust. For our purposes, we're going to call it a lead magnet because a lead is someone who is willing to listen to what you have to say. They are an outsider. You're turning them in to an insider. That's what you want. You're going to give them a lead magnet. I can hear, I know, you. now you're thinking, so, dude, what's a lead magnet? 
Lead magnet is just a special name that helps your potential client see that you are an expert and you have empathy. That's what makes us different doing sales, doing business as smart, ambitious women. Not only are we accomplishing all of these different things, but we're also taking the time to really help one by one and really look out for those around us. And so you want to be able to show your expertise and your empathy as quickly as possible. So let's talk about a few of these. And I'm just going to give you a few examples of this. A good quality lead magnet would help your potential customer succeed at a new skill. So how would they do this? If you are a handwriting expert or a calligrapher, and you just want to teach people how to do that really cool swoosh underneath your writing that just has the perfect scoops and it just has it balanced and it's thick where it needs to be thick and then it's almost fine, laser fine where it needs to be. You could have a lead magnet walking someone through the process of how to create that. Now you're going through teaching them the strokes. Maybe you take pictures and put it on a PDF format, a document to create for them. Maybe you're doing a video that you cannot get anywhere else, or you're just walking them through and showing them a little bit of an example. That is something that you could do and have that as a lead magnet to pull people in in a totally different way. Let's look at it in a different, totally different industry. A photographer has excellent skills at creating where you're looking at a person's face, but not only can you see the person's face, you can see every single individual eyelash so close on their eye and you can't help but just get zoomed right in. Well, that is a very focused and fine-tuned skill. And so you could explain just this one picture. Look, here's the lighting. It's a regular, you know, early afternoon. It's a perfect time to take it, this picture because the sun's gone down, but it's not too dark and it's just right here. And this is how I did that with this one skill. What you're doing is showing that you're an expert at what you do, but also how difficult it is. Maybe you want to picture that crisp, but you have a small child. It, so you can show, look, I know when your kid's screaming and you got this and this and you're trying to get this going, how do you handle all of that? Those specifics that you already have that you use every day, you're teaching your client how to succeed at this one little new skill. That's when you really show your expertise and your empathy. Next, you are going to show them how to make a purchase. And you're like, what? I thought you had to build all this trust before you start selling them. No, what you're going to do is you're going to build trust by showing them what tools they can use to do even better at these skills. So keeping on with this photographer, instead of actually going through and wanting to show, you could say, look, I've, I've learned how to do this and I have a whole entire course to show you specifics on this one skill, how to get that very, very crisp picture. However, if you buy this lens and you show the specific lens with a link something, this lens really works for most people because, however, this lens would be a second choice. It is not as fine-tuned, however, you can get most of what you're looking for, but not that 100% fine precision that they're looking for for a magazine cover, right? And it's a lower price point that would work for you. That kind of a resource would show people that you're really an expert, but you understand that, look, photography isn't my life right now. It is something I'm doing on a budget. In discussions with other podcasters, it's so interesting. You'll be sitting at the table and eventually it'll always come back to who, what kind of mic to use, (laughs) which is so funny to me because I could care less. It's a technical thing. I want it to sound good. But then having someone say, look, Amy, you have, 
a very a woman's voice, but it's not the higher register woman's voice. You got that lower wolfy mama voice that you would really do well with a microphone like this. Well, being so specific into a voice range where I am and what they what a couple of tools that would make me sound better. Man, I'm looking right at that looking to make a purchase in that direction. Do you see how someone can show their expertise and their empathy in the same strokes? Okay, another idea, maybe you want to help somebody get started on their very first step. You're teaching someone a new language. You're teaching someone how to use that crazy instant pot that is amazing. You can do so many different things, but you look, open the package and you're like, what in the world? We talked about this earlier, that that's uh, my Christmas gift and I'm still trying to figure out the ins and outs. And I've done a couple of things and I really, the results I've had thus far have been phenomenal. And I'm starting to really get it and fall in love with the power of this tool. But I want to be even better. If someone could teach me the very first things to I need to know how to get started with this, or what the first things I need to know about making the vowel sounds in a different language, and how sentence structure is totally different. In English, we would say white house. In Spanish, we would say casa blanca. And that's the difference. That's the whole difference then that would really help me get started in the next couple of lessons, right? So that would be an excellent lead magnet. What about a lead magnet to show someone that they're learning secret information? Once you get going and you're teaching and sharing your knowledge, you're going to find that people ask kind of the same kind of questions. You could create a lead magnet of some sort that says, look, I know you got these questions, so let me just break it down. This is something that I would tell to you personally, but I really wouldn't put it on my blog post. This is a very pers- This is my personal opinion, my thoughts, and here's why. Well, how cool is that? Because you're building this trust saying, look, I already know your question. Let me answer it for you. But it comes in a very personal format so you can speak one-to-one and connect with them. Excellent form for a lead magnet for your audience. Another sort of a lead magnet would save them time. Whew. As smart, ambitious women, we know all about this. You got 17 things that have to be done. How do you make sure that it all gets taken care of? Those time saving tips can be amazing. One email list that I signed up for, and I was just looking at it just this past week, talked about over five years ago, she spoke about how she learned how to do laundry in half the time. Do you think I'm signing up for that list? Oh, you can bet your bottom dollar. And it was, she didn't save time. She just cut the steps. And so it was so much less work for her. Her family did the sorting. So that splitting up those steps, she was able to, when she would go to do the laundry, instead of taking all those extra hours, she cut that time in half. That one clue was so helpful for her and think of how it has helped her audience. And then finally, another idea of what would be a quality lead magnet is something that eliminates extra steps. Sometimes they call them a hack or a cheat sheet. Look, do this, 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 and you've got it done. And there you go. That would be an excellent lead magnet. So there's all these different kinds of lead magnets. That's the first thing you need to think about. Now, before you do any of this, before you start jumping in and and considering and you're sitting at the computer and you're banging your head because you're so frustrated, there's so much to do. I know that feeling. Don't get to that point. Instead, ask yourself these five questions. First, what does my customer want? Do they want to save time? Do they want to save money? Are they really looking for someone that can just walk them through a process and kind of handhold as they're learning this different, something very, very new for them? What does your customer want at this moment? Next, what is the best method to connect with my customer? Would you want to make an audio recording so you can talk to them specifically in their ear? Would it be easier to do a quick video and show them the strokes that you're doing as you're doing the hand lettering method? Would it be 
effective to actually just create a document, a Word document with a couple of images just to show, look, step one, and then move to step two and step three. The third question you should ask yourself before you ever start creating a lead magnet is, what do I already have to offer? Maybe you already have this all written out in one of your blog posts, and it's an early blog post, and you haven't looked at that thing in two years, and probably most of your audience has never seen it, then you don't have to create something completely new. You start with that basic component, and there you go. Also, ask yourself, what do I offer exceptionally well? Like, what makes me different? Why do people listen to me rather than someone else? Do you tell hilarious stories? Are you so good at teaching the concept because you are very thorough and you go through step by step and so detail oriented? So once you know what you offer and what you do exceptionally well, you really want to maximize on that. If people are coming to you because they trust you and they love that you are so thorough and you not only have a beautiful spreadsheet template that they can follow, but you have gone through and you've got some real specific formulas that have worked and been very effective as you've been doing your family budget, right? then that's what you want to focus on, the specific details so it, people can feel that connection to you. And then the final question you want to ask yourself before you do create all this extra work making a lead magnet is what is the first thing my customer needs to know? Is there something that they just really need to learn and it'll make everything else go smoother? That's what you need to figure out. Okay, so that's the very first part is uh, what you can offer, how to create that lead magnet, and where you go from there. Now, just like your closet or your pantry or your email list, when you focus on this thing, remember quality over quantity every time. You could have a list of 5,000 names and 5,000 email addresses. But if you haven't emailed them or sent them any sort of communication in the past two to five years, then what are you doing? Right? It's almost like you're starting at zero. It is better to have a small list who knows you, a small list of people who really trust you, that list of people who just like what you're doing and want to be part of that, that's very interactive and very responsive, then have this list of 5,000 names. Okay? That's the one thing. It all starts with the lead magnet that you offer. I've created a mini magazine of how to create your own lead magnet, and I have a list of 20 very specific ideas with examples that you could use to create your quality lead magnet that pulls your customer in and takes them from an outsider who doesn't know you to a very, very avid, enthusiastic insider and cannot wait to talk to you. Next week, we're going to dive into what makes an auto sequence, what happens after you have that first conversation, and where do you go from there. This is all part of creating the email marketing strategy that works for you so you can have more time to focus on those things that matter most to you. Hey, I love teaching you how to enrich your life and your bottom line. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening today. Remember, you can enrich your life and your bottom line. It starts with you. See you next time on Think Enriched with Amy Robles.